Welcome, first of all. Um, where and when did your passion, there are quite a few foodies obviously in this, in this room tonight, and quite a few people who are obsessed with food. You're obviously obsessed with food, as most chefs are, I take it. When and where did your passion with, for food actually begin? I have to say, <clears throat> um, everything started when I was, everything started to clear up when I was eight year old. Uh, probably the oldest of the family out of uh, brothers and sister. And um, somewhere, somehow, is a, a bit of a case of circumstance because my mother uh, caught the polio when she was very young, before she had a bit of an handicap. And one thing that she was four year old. Therefore, what happened is all her life, I'm not saying that she was suffering, she was not complaining, but she effectively she had a, a decent handicap, physical handicap. I don't, I don't want to, I'm not sponsored by Kleenex, by the way, don't start thinking. <laughs> but what happened is, it took, it took time, it was not presented to us like it was a, an obvious issue. But what happened is I noticed my mom was always quiet and cooking a lot. And it, on the side, obviously, she was making a bit of a a bit of cash to survive, to, to, to demanding some clothes and so on. But mainly her passion, or mainly her occupation was to cook. And she did not have that much money, if I remember. You know, it was not like, therefore it was an issue of trying to select the right produce. Luckily for French people in general, there is outside market, vegetable markets or whatever. Therefore I've got to say that was a huge advantage for her on a Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. And as, as I said, I was the oldest of the family, and what happened is I was always spending time with her. And because initially, as a young kid, very hyperactive and very passionate for any reasons, I've always been starving, always have this appetite to put my finger somewhere or somehow. And what happened is, uh, I, I <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> All right, calm down. <laughs> I was, I move on, move on, move on. the suspense and, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, it's funny Stop because laughing. I've always, I've always, I've always declared 30 years ago already that cooking and making love was the only time you can use your five senses. Therefore, now I can understand what you, you're laughing about. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we'll uh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. We, we'll, we'll move on very quickly, I think. Uh, your mother was, was French. Your father was Italian. Was there a clash between Italian and French food? It was olive oil against butter. Apples against aubergines and tomato. In fact, I am probably, most probably about the age of 10, the first witness of ready, steady cook. Because it was like a communion back at home, cooking for, say, 20, 30 people. And my grandmother from, uh, at that time, living in the south of France, Italian, only speaking Italian, against the one from Normandy. And they kept an eye on me, on, on more or less the same time, preparing the food for the communion for everyone. And it was like ravage, you know, it was a wood table, run, flowers everywhere, you know, it was, they were actually competing. But somewhere, somehow, I remember a lot of, a lot of things happened. They did not communicate that much, but I can see it was a very fierce sense of competition. And the food was fantastic. Um, but going back to the passion and the fact that I was introduced uh, with cooking, or first enjoying food, and, and it's the fact that years and years and years and years, by trying to get intention for my mom, remember she did not speak that much, I'm not saying that she was distant, but the only way I could get to her was to help her out and to understand eye contacts and so on. A wonderful woman, I've got to say. She, she's an amazing woman. But what happened is, after many years, I developed some confidence, a lot of confidence, purely because I understood mainly everything about textures, flavors, mixing, buying, I mean, sourcing the, sourcing the food, the seasons. And it happened as early as, as a child. Therefore, what happened is, due to the fact I was very good at school, I mean, they, instead of giving, giving me a certificate and with all the honors, they kicked me, kicked me out at the age of 14. And I remember I came back home, and the first time I saw my father upset is when the glasses were jumping about by kicking the, the table with his. 
And I realized something was wrong at that time. Once again, I was in my little bubble. You know, I, w I wasn't too sure what was. Um, and basically speaking, uh, the next day from being kicked out from school, and I was not a bad influence. I was just purely someone. Um, I was quite artistic, in a way, in my own way. But I was very hyperactive. I did not enjoy the format of, and especially in that time, I mean, that was, you're talking about the 60s, 70s. Therefore, all of a sudden, the next day, I'm working in a bakery, the local bakery. Therefore, I start as a cleaner, you know, doing the apples, the, 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 the onions, the garlic, and so on. In one point, I used to have a farm. The size of the size, but you keep peeling all the time. And therefore, what happened is, gradually, I got my way by winning my, my, my status, by getting closer to the, 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 the oven, the, the, the bread oven. And that was my, my mission. The closer I am, the more exciting it is. And, and then I was asked to start a bit early during the night, like say five, four o'clock and so on. And very quickly I was part of the team. But what happened is when you are busy to be in the same rhythm, because obviously everything is usually there is a sense of urgency when you are a baker, which is atrocious. Because obviously you do it during the night. And I remember the change of DJ with the radio stations. We used to listen to radio music all the time. You could see the different style of music coming closely to the morning. And you knew you had to be ready to get all the bread out, getting the meringues organized, the croissant. Absolutely. Therefore, what I'm saying is, not only so you work with some phenomenal uh, um, talent, artisan, pure artisan, but also with the sense of urgency. And I promise you, it's absolutely shocking to see people who can be so defined, so explicit, and, and also doing the numbers. Okay, let, let's move on. As you can see, John Christoph has a lot to say for himself. So uh, we have uh, 10 minutes. Um, let's move on quickly. Your confidence built. And at 19, are many 19-year-olds don't really do what you did at 19. Tell, ladies and gentlemen, what happened to you at 19? Well, 19, um, I become uh, an official reject as a footballer. <laughs> that, that was a sad moment of my life. <laughs> and um, more or less, I mean, I was trying to be a footballer in the same time as a chef, baker. I think it's everyone the same dream, more or less. And um, one day I was offered the position working for the Rothschild family in Paris. And I have to say that was the most, again, one of the most surprising and the most uh, amazing moments of my life because um, you're dealing with some serious contenders. You know, n money was no object, even so they were very down to earth. They had a huge knowledge about food and wine, of course. So what kind of things do they have you do? Um, you mean in terms of... Um, in terms of cooking, that is obviously, yeah. Uh, Omelettes. <laughs> 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 uh, lamb chop. <laughs> You don't think one minute I was a master. I was just a case of circumstance. They love me, I love them. They trust me, I trust them. And the thing is, it just ended up that way. But what was amazing is by knowing the, Roth the Rothschild family, working with the Rothschild and traveling around France and Europe, the things which actually turn rapidly my goal, my objective, is the fact that we only spoke well, except me, in English, every oh. day. Yeah, nobody, I mean, it was only me as a French person. And everybody else, whatever was the nanny, the gardener, the butler, whatever, they were all from Britain. And even the children, they used to speak to me in four different languages. Therefore, I knew that w was my next, uh, my next uh, direction, is to, to cross over the channel and hopefully to be able to enjoy for once in my life to, to learn the language and, and meet Kevin Kingan. And I met Kevin Kingan, believe it or not. Uh, I used to have Kevin Kingan posters in my bedroom. <laughs> and uh, you can imagine how excited I was. Basically, every, every morning I woke up, I used to say, hello, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> and once upon a time, I was working at the Chutung Lane in, in uh, the, the New Forest. I was a commie over there. And, um, and I, I can tell you something very quickly before uh, going back to the kitchen. Um, sometime it was a phenomenal re hotel restaurant, five star. And occasionally you will have a, a customer or two walking through the kitchen the, on the front of the pass. 
I mean, most of the chefs will not even acknowledge whoever those persons are. But I remember he was a, a curly uh, chap. And I saw his nose, the same as that moment, my poster, the profile of, and I recognized Kevin Keegan. And I felt so disappointed, you know why? Because on my poster, he was six foot two. <laughs> and when I met him, he was only a tiny. <laughs> Therefore, okay. I feel cheated by the... <laughs> uh, first, before I go back there, because first I would like to express something very important. I'm delighted to be here tonight and, and very privileged. I was asked to contribute to the menu seven, eight months ago when I first met Cyril and Sharon, which I have to say are doing a fantastic job with the team. And I looked at the menu, I spoke to the chef, Cyril, which you will meet later on, and I said, I refuse to put anything on your menu. I don't think it's fair. I think you're good enough to be yourself. And I, sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I thought, it, it, actually, he's over there. I thought it would be unfair for me to put my print on someone who's hugely passionate, has so much to offer. And somewhere, somehow, there's 16 years between us. <laughs> now you know my age, you know you know how old I am now. But what I'm saying is, it actually, I get so much blessed to see people who are really trying in life to express themselves. And like I said tonight, I only did only did the washing up so far. Therefore, <laughs> don't try to give me the. This lady over there gave me the compliment about the macro. I said thank you very much. But to be honest, I didn't do the macro. <laughs> That's just help to plate. In oh. fact, Cyril is over there, and I would like you to come over there very quickly, Cyril. A round of applause for Cyril. Please yeah. come on. What would you like to say, Israel, very quickly? Well, if you haven't enjoyed it, it's not my fault. But if you did, I did it. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> OK, uh, we, we talked about all kinds of characters. We will come back later on to talk about Keith Floyd. Some of us know my uh, Keith Floyd. But for now, thank you very much. Merci. Thank you.